today we are gonna give our character some animations custom animations that will be uh, visible on other clients so it'll be multiplayer ready you're not gonna have any weird rubber banding it's gonna look right it's gonna things are gonna be done proper um, you can use any animations you want I have a preference for rifle anim set pro which is a paid animation set that is on the marketplace but you do not need these animations you don't need them at all you can go to mixamo you can go a hundred different places to get animations so once again any animations you want uh that you can use i'm just using these rifle animations because they're great i went ahead and i've already set up a project i'm using uh 4.26 the i think it's 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 an experimental engine version but you can use any engine version you want i just happen to have a bug with the sound card that i'm using for recording right now it still hangs a little bit but it doesn't crash uh th these are just things that happened uh with unreal from time to time there's you know certain versions have benefits and negatives and, and whatever so i'm using 4.26 right now it'll work if you're using an older version just fine um as long as it's not it's like super 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 old any 4.2 and above actually probably 4.18 and above it'll probably work but anyway, let's keep going here. So I have my test project here. I'm going to go ahead and add Rifle Anim Set Pro to my uh, test project, which I named Test uh, 426, and it doesn't pop up. Let's see, Show All Projects. And so basically, if it since this is a newer engine version and the uh, the animations that I'm working with do not um, are the the animation set isn't ready for four dot two four dot two six because it's not out yet. Uh, you you have to do what you just saw me do, where it's like, uh, well, which version of the animations should I use? So we're gonna use four dot two five animations. Should be fine. Okay, so once your animations are added to the project, go ahead and open it up. You can either do it right here. I usually don't like using the uh, this uh, this starter right here. I'll do it from straight from here by just double clicking on the U project. Okay, now that we're all opened up, uh, first thing you do, click on over here, and you can see everything going on. You probably won't see everything. You can set because I have filters um set so i can see everything you can go down to view options over here and you can turn all this stuff on or off and it will determine what you're going to see over here but uh right out of the box you should be able to see just fine um the options that you're going to need so let's go third person and so also let me say this is just a default third person project so basically it's just a guy and as soon as i press play uh he, he can run around like this you know, not a lot going on. These movements are already uh, replicated properly. And so basically what we're gonna do is take the our custom rifle animations and we're gonna put them in here so you can see him move around and you'll be able to see it on clients properly without any weird rubber banding. So let's come out of here. And as you can see, when I come out of the project, there is a little bit of a hang. This was uh, what I suspect is the sound card issue, but on 426, it does appear to be so where it won't completely crash the program. So that's why we're using this engine version. Um, so we're going to blueprints. So just to, to start out, what we want to do is get the rifle animations and we're going to convert them to the skeleton that is tied to this guy. So he has his own skeleton. When you, when you get Rifle Anim Set Pro, it also comes with another mannequin that has its own skeleton, and that can get really confusing because they have, I believe they have the same name. So what we're gonna do is we are going to delete those. And it's gonna freak out, like, are you sure you wanna get rid of them? Yes, we do. And it's just to avoid the confusion of having two, because we have two different characters, two different skeletons, and all that sort of stuff. So now our animations, they don't have, uh, they no longer have a skeleton, so we have to assign them the skeleton of the character we just saw running running around. So uh, with multiplayer, we use in-place animations. And if I were to go on and click one of these, uh, couldn't find the skeleton, uh, would you like to choose a new one? You could go yes. And then you'll see UE4 mannequin skeleton, that's what you want. These are not what we want. As you can see, it's pretty obvious which one that it's going to go to because of the picture that it shows. So you can retarget. So now you can go through and you could do each and every single one of these, but I highly recommend you avoid all of that and just click here 
and we'll go all the way to our end and you can shift left click and then we get them all right click and just go to retarget and retarget on existing which means it replaces the file retargeted rather than making a whole new file okay once again we come in here we select our skeleton and retarget so we took the animations from one character and we applied them to another now with these still highlighted take control and press s for save it'll save all those files it'll be just a second okay with all of our files saved now we have to find a good spot we can uh put these files we got to basically lump them together in a manner that can be usable uh so that's called a blend space and what a blend space does is it just blends all the animations together and it's easier to show than explain so i'm just going to pick any any spot i'll do but i'm just going to go into the blueprints folder that they already made and right click animation and there should be blend space in here somewhere there it is and we're just gonna oh, we got to assign our skeleton to it which is the one we've been selecting and we'll call it uh like default rifle movement bs for blend space and go ahead and open it up over here and i have multiple monitors so they're popping up all over the place okay so we have our access settings. Now, Rifle Anim Set Pro does come with its own blend space, but it's not really set up for what we're wanting to do. <clears throat> it definitely has a great setting if you want to do single player stuff uh, where it tracks the forward and le uh, right movements. And uh, and that would, is how I did it before where we did all these RPC calls, but basically there was an issue with doing too many RPC calls and you should, really shouldn't be doing any at all. So we're gonna fix that up here today. So with our horizontal uh, axis here, you can see it running this way, is gonna represent our direction. So what we're gonna do is replace none with direction. Uh, the minimum value, so with uh, we're gonna use a function called calculate direction and it uh, calculates as your character rotates, it takes his rotation and it will spit out values in a float, which is a decimal value between negative 180 to 180. So what we want to do is set this so it's going to accept that value. So we'll set it up as our minimum value is negative 180 and our positive uh, maximum value of positive 180. So negative 180, positive 180. Uh, grid divisions, this will be just so it's easier to set up our animations. Uh, we'll set that up to 8 and you will see these square boxes have increased to 8. Uh, interpolation time. So this is basically going to be how how the animations blend together. And I am no animation expert, so I, I recommend you watch uh, other. There's other videos out there that talk all about uh, setting these things to look exactly pretty. And you may find a better way to set these. So feel free to experiment with these values. Don't don't think there's any right way to have those set. It's very much up to to you. Now, very importantly down here uh these these interact similarly you got to be your interpolation time and then your interpolation speed these all affect how the animations blend together once again another knob that uh you know i talked in another video about you know design and all of these sort of things versus like um engineering this would be definitely be a design type knob that somebody that's like you know what i personally prefer it to be this speed or i personally prefer it to be that speed very subjective um, so we have those values set in there. Okay, that's great. So we, we have the value set, but we don't have, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have the, the animations put in here yet, so we need to do that. So as you can see, I have all my animations. If you don't see the animations that we just put in there, you will, go, you will have to just close, close this by Xing out of it and coming right back into it. So this this is the part that gets a little boring i may fast forward through some parts some parts but basically i'm going to go through and find the animations that i'm looking for and um plop, plop them in here and then i'll show you how it all blends together so we want to go ahead and find find our normal strafe left and you got to watch out because you don't want any crouch so i got strafe left loop and we'll go ahead and pop that right into the middle right here. Then we'll take the straight left 45. Now, if you didn't have all these animations, like at different degrees, 45 degrees, whatever, you, you would have to, you, you, this is why I like Rifle Anima Set Pro. They already have basically the animations that you uh, want that are, that are um, labeled properly, um, but you can still find 
uh, similar animations for free. Okay, so we got strafe left 45, strafe left, and then strafe, let's crouch, we don't want that. Strafe left one, you see as the numbers are getting higher, and then we'll do strafe right, those in the middle, strafe right 45. You can almost look at strafe right for like if it was uh, 90. But they didn't call it that. They just called it strafe right. So we got strafe right 45, strafe right 90, strafe right 135. Okay. So this second value here that doesn't have a label, that's going to be represented by our speed. And in our character movement component, we have, um, we have speed set to, I believe it's the maximum. I think default out of the box is 600. So we're just going to set that here. Once again, depending on how fast your character moves, that value can be changed. So set that to 600. We're going to change our uh, grid divisions here to 8, and we'll keep all that the rest the same. As you can see, when we typed in speed, speed goes into here. So if these are all of our, and I'm by moving that dot, I'm clicking shift and just dragging over here. So you can see we have rifle strafe left 45, rifle strafe left, rifle, rifle strafe run 35 that's a mistake that should be up here because as our speed increases it goes over here so we need to find the equi equivalent of strafe left uh 135 rifle strafe left 135 without the run so the difference here is speed right so you got i can highlight over here rifle strafe left 135 and over here rifle sta strafe run 135 so as your character gets faster as your speed increases he goes into a run position versus his walk position over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do all of the runs. It might be simpler to type in run here so we don't have that same issue. So we did the rifle strafe. Okay, let's say rifle strafe right 135. That will be over here. Rifle strafe run 45 left. That will be over here. 45 right, that will be right here. Rifle strafe left. And then rifle strafe right. Okay, so let's check our values. We have rifle strafe run right. Rifle strafe run. Let's make sure. 45 right. 135. 45 left. 135 left. That should be good. Now, what goes in these corners? Well, that's going to be uh, backwards. So, see how they spelled out back. A DBK, maybe. Uh, we got to find where backwards is. Oh, there we go. BWD. So, let's type in BWD. Okay, we don't want crouch. We don't want prone. So, since speed is determined over here, rifle, walk, backwards loop we don't want the starts and it's like it's so easy to accidentally put a start animation in there it's no big deal if we do we can just fix it walk backwards and since this is walk what's going to be up here we're going to have run backwards okay all right okay and then we have that right there i'm going to just look over at my notes real quick make sure i have everything set Okay, and so we have our backwards. Now we just need to do our forwards. Okay, so we have our rifle run forward loop. We put there. And then our walk forward loop we put here. Okay. So as I hold shift and left click, we can see he runs forward. He just, if your speed gets down to uh, near near zero, it will be a walk these should all be walk animations until eventually he's walking backwards and then basically as speed increases he just does what we told it to do told him to do just doing it faster okay so that's our blend space so we'll save that okay and now we need to hook that into something so to get this character uh you could add a blueprint it'll open him up or you can just come over here, third person character. 
Okay, and you got all this gobbledygook good on, over on over here. We want to get so when I select over here, it highlights what I'm selecting right here. So we don't want the camera, we want the mesh. If we want his animation blueprint, we can find it real easy by looking over here under animation and third person anim BP. We just select the magnifying glass. That'll take us right there. If you did get lost though, you can see where I'm at in the tree over here to see that there he is. So that's our, this will be our animation class. Okay. It kind of gives you a weird spot here um, that confuses things. So we're going to, get out of there by clicking double clicking the event graph and this is where all your code basically goes for for animations and the main node that we're wanting to see is calculate direction so let me pop up that okay and real quick i want you guys to take note that they've already calculated our speed and they've already determined if we're in air and those are represented over here this update animation gets called uh, every single frame and it gets called on clients and servers. And this is how the replication occurs. We don't have to use a replication node or anything like that because it's already being fired on all the clients. And since it's already doing that, we don't need to t tell the server, hey, you need to replicate this to all the clients because it's running on all the clients. And the reason it can run on all the clients is because it's not gonna affect gameplay. So what I mean by that is it's not gonna determine a score. It's not gonna determine um, anything critical to winning or losing. It's simply gonna be determining how you are seeing uh, another uh, client move. And that doesn't really affect the game. So it's okay for clients to run uh, the animations for other clients, but it's you gotta wrap your head around this. Each client is, is playing the animations of another client they don't the other clients don't see that they are calculating their own movement but what you see are based off of calculations from your own client it, it, it so so you, you think if you have five players playing every single every single computer connected is doing the calculations for all the other players so it can be in it can be intense, but it's far better to do it like that than to have a super high latency calculation that's being conducted on the server and attempting to replicate it onto the clients. That just wouldn't make sense. It would be latent. You, this the animations, especially, they almost always should be calculated on client for every single other client that is playing. So enough talk. Let's get. Uh, let's let me show you what's actually happening. So we get our calculation. The target is uh, this, the anim instance. So you don't have to worry about plugging in anything into here because uh, of, of self. It can, it can reference itself because that's where this function uh, was created, was in uh, the, the parent class anim instance. So to get our velocity, we already have a velocity node, that, so that makes it easy. And what, what is it getting the velocity of? Well, it's getting the velocity of the pawn owner, which is this guy. Okay, so we got our velocity. What else do we need? We need the rotation. So that guy, if you look, try get pawn owner. It returns. Okay, it's not, it returns a pawn object reference. So we got our pawn. Uh, we want to know the rotation. So the cleanest thing to do is to double click off of here, and we'll just say get rotation. And we can just use get actor rotation because we don't want our aim rotation right now. We just want our actor's rotation right there. And then, bam, that's going to do a lot of work for us. And if you notice, you hover over it, it tells you it's going to give you negative 80 to 180, which is exactly what we already set up in the Anim Blueprint. So lucky for us, we're good to go there. So let's go ahead and right click, promote that to a variable. And we are going to call that uh, our direction. And we're going to plug it in like this. And we are going to clean up these nodes because they out of the box come messy as heck. So we're going to fix all that. In the meantime, I have OCD, so I like to highlight things and press Q repetitively to kind of straighten some nodes out. Um, you can do as you see fit. Okay, so we have our calculate direction, compile, and save. Now let's go to this guy's. So we're in the event graph. We want to go down to the anim graph. And here's where the animations are put together. Uh, so we, we're going to dive into this. This is, this is the end of the um, anim graph. We want to go to the beginning. So just double click onto here. And we already have a nice idle run, which is what... Uh, wow, they've changed some stuff. Uh, this is the first time I'm looking into 426. I've never seen this graph before. That's interesting. Lots of stuff different. 
Um, so what we want to do is go into our asset browser here and we want to find the blend space that we made. And default rifle movement blend space. That's what we made. We're going to drag it into here. Okay. So we could click on it, but first what we want to do is we want to make up uh, a reason we can go from our idle run to our movement. So since this is going to be handling all of our movement, really all we need here is idle. We don't want run in there. But as you can see, they've combined idle and run into their own blend space. We don't want to use that. We're just going to go to rifle idle. That didn't work. So we're going to backspace idle. Rifle idle. Just like that. And we could just plug directly into here like that. We know and we don't need that anymore. All this node is going to be doing is taking care of situations where we are idle with the rifle. So I compiled, that's when he went into that form. And we can rename that. Once again, I mean, just with anything else programming related, it doesn't matter what you name things, but it does help us keep organized. So how we get into our movement. So there's a certain conditions that have to occur. By just dragging off there, we're gonna decide, okay, this is how we get into it, and here's the condition. As you can see, to get into jumping, you have to be in the air. So to get into moving, we double click onto here. We're gonna say, hey, get our speed, just drag and drop and get. And we wanna make sure our speed is greater than, greater than zero. We also wanna make sure that we're not in the air. So get your in air and type in not. It'll do the opposite of what this is. And this is just a bool. Unreal is color coded, reds are bools, greens are floats. And we wanna make sure both these conditions are true. So we click the and, whoa. So this says, if your speed's greater than zero and you're not in the air, now you can go into the movement blend space that we made. Now coming out of it, it's gonna be similar, but reversed. We want our speed, you could do nearly equal here or you could do equal. So far for me today, equals work, but if you got into a situation it wasn't, because floats are not exact, nearly equal will be fine for us. So if the speed is equal to zero and you're not in the air, And we want this to be an and. And those are the conditions under which you can enter into the transition. Highlight all, Q is in queen, straighten it out. So speed is equal to zero and we're not in the air. We can come out of our movement. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but we never, so far we're saying if we're not in the air, what, what happens if we're here and we go into the air, we don't have a way to get out of our movement. So basically we'd be moon moonwalking. So we need to give ourselves an out if we go into the air. So we're just gonna go into our, from here. And we're gonna say, hey, if you're in the air, do that. Just drag and drop it right on there. Okay, and the, and the reason we don't come back into here is because imagine if, you're, if I said, okay, if you're in the air, you can come back into here and then you can go into your falling because this really handles how a fall or a jump that's the same, how it's handled. It would look very strange because you'd be walking around and then you would have to go idle before you could start falling, which would be kind of strange. So we don't want to do that. So we can save. Now, let's go into here. Okay, so we had our direction and our speed, and that is, uh, those are the values that we set up initially with the blend space, direction and speed. And because we made those variables, it's very simple. We can just take speed and plug it into speed, and we can take direction and plug it into direction, because we're calculating that on the uh, event graph that we made. So you can grab all that, and we are good. And this is, and if you double click this, you will see the blend space that we made, okay? So we can press the magnifying glass and we come back to our main screen. You might want to save this, compile and save. Sometimes stuff won't kick off unless you compile and save. And we're going to see some issues, but I want to show you what we have already since it's been a little bit. Okay. 
So as you can see, we have the character, he's doing our rifle animations. But you might be asking yourself, okay, well, is, is this, can other people see it? Because we're playing right now as the server. Anytime you run and you haven't assigned any other clients, you're running as the server. So to t test if this works, uh, client to client and everything replicated, you just exit out of here. It will lag, we'll just give it a minute. Okay. We will go into, let's see, let's, uh, you might have different, you might see different things here. Um, they've changed it a little bit. It's not a big deal. Uh, you can just say, I think the button will used to be run as dedicated server or not. Um, you can, if you run as three clients with a, I'm sorry, if you run as three clients without a dedicated server, you're going to see a server and two clients. If you run with the server, you'll, or dedicated server, you'll see three clients, if that makes sense. So um, what we're gonna do is we're not gonna play as the listen server and you can highlight these and see, like I said, these might be different. Uh, we're gonna play as client and we're gonna set up two. So we'll know that these guys are running, uh, we'll be able to det detect replication issues right away by running in this mode. Basically anytime you see three if you can see it on three different monitors then you know or three different clients you know that you are going to be good in the replication realm so let's get that a little smaller okay and as you can see he's moving around and you do see the rifle um, animations they did they are my movement is replicating if you see a little bit of jerkiness once again the sound card is interfering it is not the um it is it is not the setup it is not any because i'm not fidgeting with any replication settings these are their default replication settings when i don't have any of this this silly sound card plugged in everything's running perfectly smooth but you may notice a little jerkiness depending on how youtube uh does or does not squash my um my frame rate so Okay, we have that going on, but it's it's kind of weird. Like he's he's not moving in the in the manner that we want him to. So I'll escape out of there. Let it hang. Cool. Then we're gonna come back into here. Now we're gonna go into our character blueprint. We're gonna change some settings. So if you come up here, you click. Make sure you're highlighted this top one over here. You can notice they turned off yaw. We're gonna turn on yaw and use controller rotation yaw. So basically that means when I move my mouse, the character is gonna move with my mouse. Eventually we'll add in a uh, turn in place and, and uh, I can make this thing look a lot prettier. But for now, that's what we're gonna use. And we're gonna come down here, our character movement. We're gonna turn off, just come into our filter and type in orient. Okay, and you'll see orient rotation of movement. That means when he would change directions, uh, the, the character would follow that direction rather than start strafing or something. So we are gonna turn this off. Okay, let's compile, save. And I just dawned on me that, well, I don't wanna get into that just yet. I'll skip that. Let's just press play. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so as you can see now, he is strafing left to right and he is following the mouse. This is a little bit closer to what we want. And I talked about turn in place. We will eventually do a tutorial where uh, when you do this, his, his torso will move. Once he reaches a certain uh, degree of turn, the body will turn. And uh, I'll show you the proper way to do this as opposed to actually setting rotation on the server and on the client, which is not the way you wanna do uh, turn in place. You wanna do actually a similar, similar method to how we're running our, our animations now where the, uh, where the each each client is calculating the turn in place and this is this is the way that it it, it is supposed to be done and the the capsule is actually always turning with your mouse and we're act, you actually tell the legs to stay put until a certain change and then the legs kind of catch up to the body which is which is how you should do it um and and obviously we don't have any uh, pitch control yet either but importantly we have our our movement is replicating without any rpc calls or anything like that so let's escape out of here okay so we've come to a good place to stop today on the next episode i'm going to show you guys how to um clean up these animations a little bit and there are certain things that can occur with how we set things up 
um, as far as uh, movements we could make a lot smoother and just some general tweaks that I think we should do to make this even better and of course cleaning up our code so that it would be presentable in the event somebody had to review it or something like that. So that's all for today. I'll see you guys on the next one.